Hello, good morning. This is Siva Dwaki from uh, MassMailer. Thank you so much for joining the webinar today. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about um, a very important topic. Uh, most of the customers keep asking me, you know, we wanna do email prospecting, uh, what is the right way to do it, right? Um, and of course, there are many things that you have to really care about, uh, but especially when it comes to the sending domain and the IP address, you got to be very careful. So again, just to set the stage, um, when I say the domain, so every business has a business domain, right? Um, IBM.com or ABC.com or whatever, right? Your own company domain. Um, so you typically use a company domain to uh, send out emails in a day-to-day uh, -day business life. You're sending out emails to your colleagues or you know, the other people that you're uh, interacting with outside of your company, uh, if you're into sales, marketing, business development, or whatever reason, right? You're using that business domain for communication purposes uh, within and or outside of your company, right? Uh, but especially uh, if you're talking about uh, uh, the marketing aspect, uh, the sales development aspect, where you have to reach out to your prospects uh, to hunt for more business, then is it good to use the same domain that you're using for your regular business activities or should you go with a, a different domain? That's the topic that I'm gonna talk about. Um, and uh, obviously we are recommending that you have to have a different domain and an IP address uh, when you're actually sending out uh, emails for prospecting purposes, okay? Um, so I, again, um, you know, I touched on this a little bit, um, the regular business emails versus the prospect emails. And, you know, these are called uh, promotional emails. If at all you're trying to target a prospect or maybe you're trying to nurture, uh, even if you're existing customer for some reason, right? Uh, so the example, um, the types of emails are newsletters, or prospecting emails, the product launch or maybe event, uh, webinar events, whatnot. So those kind of emails are called promotional emails, right? Are uh, non-transactional emails, both are same, right? And the other type of emails uh, are called transactional emails. I could be shipping, invoicing, or notifications, user sign up, um, even the regular business emails and whatnot, right? Uh, so these are the types of emails that you typically have if you really have to segregate uh, the emails that you're sending um, you know, we're not talking about personal emails. That's a different thing altogether. We are talking about the business emails, right? So um, you have promotional emails, which is non-transactional and the transactional emails. These are the types of emails that we typically have. Yeah. Um, and again, uh, just to uh, reiterate, uh, what we are recommending is that promotional emails uh, should have a different domain than the business domain and transactional emails should go from your business domain. Okay, so that's the point that you really have to uh, get it. Uh, the reason, you know, of course, I want to highlight certain differences between the promotional emails and transactional emails. So you kind of understand why uh, we are recommending that. Okay, so when you're sending out promotional emails, right, you're sending it to people sometimes known people or maybe known people, but those are promotional in nature, yeah. Um, and it's it's not that you're actually gonna get a high engagement um, for those kind of emails. I mean, you may be getting emails from say, um, Amazon for new products or any other company for Walmart for new products and whatnot. I mean, it's not that you're actually gonna really go through that email and respond back and click something it may not happen, you know, just by the subject line, you may just delete. So very less engagement is what you see when it comes to promotional emails. Uh, in a way, it will have an impact on the deliverability, right? Uh, the deliverability means how many emails are going to uh, the overall inbox, right? So uh, that has a, um, you know, um, basically in a way, less engagement meaning uh, you, you will not get a, a good deliverability, right? Uh, what it means that uh, ultimately it's going to have an impact on the domain and IP reputation, um, not in a positive way, in a negative way, if at all you have uh, less deliverability. So we're just trying to compare 
with the transactional emails and the deliverability, right? So like when you compare these to promotion and transactional, uh, you will have low deliverability when it comes to promotional emails. Uh, also, it may have negative impact on your overall deliverability, right? Um, so if you're using the same domain and IP address for both transactional and promotional emails, then it is gonna have an impact on your transactional emails as well. So the deliverability rate for your transactional emails would go down. Um, and um, at the same time, promotional emails, you would certainly see opt-outs, right? Uh, you know, how many opt-outs? We don't know, it all depends, uh, but you will certainly have more opt-outs, right? People are, uh, you know, leaving your newsletters, right? Um, and, uh, you know, people, if they don't like what you're sending, they may just flag your email as a spam, right? That's quite common too. Uh, so promotional emails are risky in nature, right? Uh, that'll basically, um, affect your reputation of your domain and IP address. Uh, and you do not want to risk your existing business domain uh, if at all it's going to impact in a negative way. So what um, is recommended here, ideally, you should have a separate uh, domain for promotional, not the regular business email. And now look at transactional. Uh, typically, if you're sending out an invoice or maybe you're sending out an order status you, you get an email from uh, amazon that hey this is the tracking and here is when it's going to ship most likely you would just open and click on that uh, status and you know see where the item is reached and when is it going to reach so there's kind of an engagement where you really uh, want to see and you really want to open it and you want to uh, you know have more details about it um, you're clicking and stuff like that and also you're never going to opt out from those emails because nobody would want to say hey I don't want to know when I'm when my order is going to reach, right? I want to unsubscribe from your emails. No, that will never happen. So you, you're not really seeing any opt out from the transactional emails, and you know obviously you're not going to have an unsubscribe link when you're sending out a transactional email. So um, it's very rare to see uh, unsubscribe link um, on uh, transactional emails. So uh, I just want to put it out that you know typically you will never see opt outs, and nobody's going to flag your email as spam report just because. You're sending them or helping them uh, that, hey, your order is uh, processed and it's gonna ship, the item is gonna ship so and so time. Uh, Nobody is really gonna flag your uh, email as a spam report, which means you're getting more engagement, which means more deliverability, right? And it has got a lot of positive impact on your domain and IP reputation uh, when it comes to transactional emails. Uh, so some people actually argue, hey, my transactional email domain has got a high deliverability. Why can't I use the same IP and the same domain for my promotional so that I get uh, you know, a good deliverability for, uh, for my promotional email as well? Well, that is uh, proven to be wrong. You know, uh, you know, uh, someday you will see that actually it is impacting your domain in a ne negative manner. And down the line, you will see that your transactional emails also uh, getting affected. You don't want to risk your business domain. Finally, that's the um, point that you really have to uh, make note of. Uh, do not risk your uh, business domain emails. Okay. Now, um, and again, we talked about uh, the problem and the benefits uh, are also are going to come to you if at all you use uh, the uh, you know IP and uh, you keep the domain and IP separate for your promotional. Um, emails, right? Uh, so basically, you're keeping the reputation separate, right? If something goes wrong with your promotional um, uh, email domain and IP address, that's not going to impact your transactional. So you're basically keeping the reputation separate, right? And uh, when it comes to, um, you know, uh, the deliverability, if you're getting a high deliverability, which means uh, your business is trustworthy, uh, so if your email is landing into spam, people think, hey, why these emails are going to spam? So it's not a, <clears throat> it's not a great company. Maybe, you know, they have a bad reputation. So that's why it is going to spam. So that uh, trust, you got to build that trust. So you, for obviously for um, the transactional emails that you're sending out, you want to keep the trust. So uh, don't risk it. Uh, so make sure that it's going to inbox. And you're building that trust as well, because most of the times you are sending both emails to your uh, customers uh, um, many times, right? Uh, so you don't want to um, risk that. And you want to keep your uh, the brand 
uh, trustworthiness and uh, that can really happen if you have a high deliverability, right? And also anytime there's a problem with these domains and IP addresses, if, you know, provided you keep them separate, you know what could have go gone wrong and you can easily go identify those problems and then fix them. So managing and maintaining and troubleshooting the issues with these domains and IP address would become uh, very easy uh, because you know, mostly um, you know, the two different departments that are trying to work with and you know, uh, everybody is working with their IT infrastructure team end of the day, if at all there's an issue and it becomes very easy to manage and maintain if you, if you have separate domains. Um, and um, also when it comes to prospecting, uh, people ask me, hey, uh, should I just go with one prospecting domain or should I need, or do I need to add more? That depends. That depends if you want to uh, have more than one promotional domain, uh, no harm if you have multiple product lines, maybe, or maybe if you have, uh, you know, uh, different business lines, you can always have multiple domains, or maybe if your volume is going to be high, you can always have abc.net, abc.us, abc.org, you know, multiple domains that are actually going to uh, help you um, in uh, sending out these promotional emails. And I recommend that you also need to have separate IP for each domain that you're going to have, and you got to warm up that IP address properly uh, for each domain. Uh, so that's very, very important, okay? And um, how does MassMailer support this, right? If you really want to uh, leverage this um, in your data um, business life, uh, we have all the tools uh, that can actually uh, let you use multiple domains. Uh, we're not limited to one domain. Uh, so we also support, um, um, you know, both types of emails, whether it is transactional email or a non-transactional email, uh, you can select what type of an email is that. Uh, that is also supported. And we do authenticate those domains if you have, right, um, multiple domains. Um, and then uh, at the same time, as I said, every domain needs to have its own IP. And we also authenticate um, the IP address. Uh, and at the, at the same time, you can actually pick and choose which IP address you're going to uh, use at one time. So if you, if you have two domains, abc.com, um, you know, you assign IP1 and then xyz.com, uh, you assign IP2. We authenticate both IPs. You can create uh, an IP pool uh, using, um, you know, the mass mailer feature, and then you can select that IP pool at runtime. So that makes it easy as well for you to manage, um, you know, multiple IPs. And uh, again, um, I've seen customers having um, multiple IP addresses uh, for the same domain. Just because you want to, again, you know, don't have too much stress on one IP if your volume is uh, super high, especially if you're sending out a million emails uh, per month, you know, you definitely need to have minimum two domains or, or more. Uh, so that's a key thing, right? So you really need to have all of that. So, um, and as I said, uh, MassMailer has uh, all the tools uh, and the features that is gonna support uh, both promotional and transactional types of emails. Uh, we can support as many domains as you need, as many IPs as, as you need. Uh, so that's kind of a given thing, right? Once again, um, thank you so much for joining uh, this webinar. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me or just type in uh, in the chat window. Uh, seems like no questions. Uh, once again, thank you so much for joining the webinar today. Um, you know, this is a weekly webinar uh, every Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, feel free to join our webinar next week again. Uh, we're going to publish the topic on our website and our social channels. Uh, if you are in uh, our email list, you will also receive an email as well. Uh, once again, thank you so much. Uh, have a great day. Have a great evening. Have a great uh,